In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up for insertion of an arterial catheter. At our institution, everything we need is conveniently packed together in an arterial catheterization kit. So I'll show you what all the individual components of the kit are, and we'll chat about what everything is used for. So first things first, this is a chloroprep applicator that we use to routinely clean the patient's skin prior to performing the procedure. It contains 2% chlorhexidine gluconate and 70% isopropyl alcohol. Everything within the open kit is sterile, which means I'm going to need to don sterile gloves and use sterile technique when handling these supplies. The only item that actually needs to be added to this kit is a sterile saline flush. You can either open the chloroprep onto the sterile field or just clean the patient's skin before you actually don your sterile gloves. Now this is my personal go-to for draping. I'll use a few of these absorbent blue OR towels to drape the wrist for radial arterial lines and I find that it does a much better job of keeping everything nice and tidy. I'm just going to separate out some of the components of the kit here. This is the drape that actually comes with the kit. You can see that there's a hole in the center that's designed to show your target anatomy, and it opens up like this. I personally dislike this drape because I find that it doesn't absorb much and is often hard to easily remove at the end of the procedure. Now before I insert an arterial line, I always anesthetize the overlying subcutaneous tissue with lidocaine. This kit includes a bottle of 1% lidocaine and an alcohol swab for cleaning the bottle. I usually inject about a half cc to a cc of lidocaine subcutaneously using a 27 gauge hypodermic needle. You can fill the syringe itself using a separate blunt tip or just save some time by pulling the lidocaine directly through the hypodermic needle. Next up is the 20 gauge IV catheter. This is the actual needle that we use to puncture the artery. This catheter can actually be connected directly to the arterial line transducer, or sometimes we'll exchange it for an alternative indwelling catheter using the Seldinger technique. We also have integrated arterial catheter systems that combine all of those pieces, but I'll show you that in a separate video. This is the spring wire guide. It's 33 centimeters long and has a soft tip at both ends. Once the IV catheter is in the artery, we can use this wire to exchange for an alternative indwelling catheter again using the Seldinger technique. The catheter in this kit is a 20 gauge catheter and it's about three inches long. Once we've cannulated the actual artery, this is the tubing that we use to connect the catheter within the artery to the arterial line transducer. The tubing itself is stiff and non-compliant, which is critical to transmitting arterial pressure waves. We're going to prime this tubing using the sterile saline syringe and we'll flush out all the air. And then we can turn the stopcock off towards the patient. This package here contains a tincture of benzoin. It's basically a type of gum resin or sap that we apply to the skin around the arterial line to help with applying the tegaderm dressing. And that's it. Everything you need for insertion of an arterial line with an IV catheter and organized from left to right in terms of the sequence of steps.